Why would Mayumi lie? She is probably protecting someone. But who? Surely you know by now. There is only one person Mayumi would want to protect that badly. It's Ota. It has to be. Does Mayumi think Ota is the killer? Last night, Ota left Matsushita Diner with Iris. Mayumi saw the whole thing. But Ota was stabbed in the stomach by the culprit. Does Mayumi not remember that? No, that isn't quite it. It is possible that she thinks Ota is responsible for everything. She thinks Ota stabbed himself? Yes. Why would he do that? Before I explain, I would like to hear your thoughts. What do you think about the possibility that Ota is the new Cyclops killer? Impossible. Why? Iris had her left eye pulled out. Ota would never do that. Have you considered that she pulled it out herself? What? Or even asked Ota to do it. Perhaps she ordered him to. The van was stolen while Iris was in the passenger seat. We know that whoever did it is the culprit we're looking for. There is a chance that Iris was not in the passenger seat. She could have been driving. How so? Iris could have taken the wheel herself and driven to the warehouse. But forensics only found Ota's fingerprints on the wheel. That can be explained. It is possible that Iris covered her fingertips with her sleeves. In yesterday's Somnium, Ota and the Polar Bear. That was just a dream. It doesn't necessarily reflect what happened in reality. In short, Ota and Iris are accomplices. This was all a performance. A performance? Iris drove the Matsushita's van. Ota drove the station wagon. They went to the warehouse separately. Then, they prepared the live stream. Iris anesthetized her left eye and removed it. Either that, or she asked Ota to extract it. After that, Iris took her position on the table, and Ota donned the polar bear costume and started the saw. Consider this. In the stream, Ota and the polar bear were never on screen at the same time. True. That means Ota went off camera, took off the costume, and then... Stay away from Tessa! Perhaps Mayumi witnessed the entire event. It is also possible that Mayumi knew what the two were up to. So she lied to protect Ota. Yes, but this is only a theory. Consider the possibility that Iris killed Shoko and Renju. Then, this whole thing was to get her off the suspects list. That's why she pulled out her eye and had Ota stab himself. It makes it look like there's another criminal involved. I will repeat myself in saying that this is only a theory. It is one of many possibilities. It's possible, but I don't think it's very likely. They wouldn't go that far just to avoid suspicion. Date, you must consider the mental state of the serial killer. Shoko and Renju were both exposed and displayed. And they both had their left eye removed while they were still alive. Whoever our killer is, 
It is clear that they are sociopathic, or even psychotic. We can't rule anything out. Ota, why are you... Why did you arrest Mom? You said you were gonna clear her! Why? When I was in the hospital, the police came to me. They told me that my mom confessed. I couldn't believe it, so I went to the police station. But because she was under investigation, they wouldn't let me see her. After that, I didn't feel like going back to the hospital. That's why I'm here. You asked me why your mom was arrested earlier, but she isn't under arrest. What? I spoke with her as part of my investigation, yes. But as a source of valuable information, not as a suspect. Mayumi confessed, but it's highly likely that she's lying. So we haven't issued a warrant for her arrest. That's what I've been saying! Mom didn't do it, she's innocent! Word is going around. Maybe Iris was the one who killed Shoko and Renju. And you and her planned this warehouse incident to get her off our suspects list. No way! Tessa... had her eye... She could have pulled it out herself. Or asked you to do it. You're kidding me, right? Do you really think I would do that? I was fighting for my life against the criminal! That wasn't caught on camera, though. Neither was the part where you got stabbed. You're saying that I stabbed myself? It wouldn't be the first time you fake something, would it, Ota? You... I'm telling you, I didn't! Then why is Mayumi protecting you? Mom is protecting me? Your mother is stubborn. She's lying to us because she's protecting someone. The only person I can think of would be you. Why? Apparently, she thinks that you're the criminal. Why would she think that? Your guess is as good as mine. Got any ideas? Maybe because of her condition. Mom has... dementia. Maybe her memory is just mixed up. Everything is my fault. It's because of me that Mom is... I know how it looks now, but back in the day, the diner was doing pretty good. You know Bloom Park is close by here, right? People who visited the park would stop here a lot. But ever since the explosion eight years ago... The chemical plant accident? Yeah. 
We're just barely outside of the restricted area, but because Bloom Park closed, the number of customers dropped by a lot. The diner didn't last much longer. When this place closed, Dad started working at a Chinese restaurant chain during the day, and he was a security guard and traffic cop at night. Mom worked as a janitor. They were both working hard and barely got any sleep. And you? I was just a high school student at the time. I was... such a dumbass. I thought it was totally normal to have both parents working, so I didn't even get a part-time job. And they bought me a PC, and idle concert tickets. I had it good, but we were drowning in debt. there's a loan on the house and the diner. Mom and Dad didn't let this place go. There are too many memories here to give it up, so they slaved day and night to keep it open. They worked and worked and worked. Thanks to them, I was even able to go to a good university, but right after I started, Dad... Passed away? Yeah, he had a heart attack. From overwork. But even then, I didn't get it, you know? I didn't appreciate how hard they worked for me. Even when I wasn't taking college seriously and getting bad grades, my mom didn't say a thing. She just smiled and told me that it was okay. Even when I told her I was going to drop out. Mom, I'm thinking of dropping out of college. What? Why do you want to do that, Ota? I decided that I'm going to become a writer. Wow, a writer. Oh, that's a good goal to have. But you really should finish college. You worked so hard to get in. <sighs> you don't understand, Mom. A writer has to put all of their time into their creativity. I won't have time to go to classes. Plus, I'm friends with the editor of a publishing company. I'm definitely going to have my first book published. Is that right? Well, Ota, if you say so, I won't stop you. Do what makes you happy. You'll turn out just fine. I know you can do it. And no matter what happens, Mom will always be on your side, okay? Forever and ever, I'll always support you, Ota. Yeah, how do you guess? It was really just a few texts back and forth, but I was thrilled. I thought I could make it as a writer because of that. But it's impossible. I know there's no way I can be a writer. I've never even finished writing a novel. Not even once. I always give up after the first 5,000 words. To even apply for the amateurs contest, you have to submit 10 times that. But mom, she still, she kept supporting me. Not long after I quit college, mom was always smiling at me. But I think she was starting to slip mentally. One day... What's wrong, Ota? Do you have the day off from school? Are you being sarcastic? Oh, right. You don't attend anymore. Oopsie, I totally forgot. How can you forget your own son's career choice? Sorry, sorry. Anyway, are you hungry? You haven't eaten anything since this morning, have you? Are you kidding? What? I ate breakfast and lunch already! Oh, did you? Uh, by the way, Ota, what's living at the dorms like? Why are you making fun of me? I'm not teasing you, honey. Don't fuck with me!
Mom got sick because I'm such a piece of shit. I was only thinking about myself. I didn't take care of her. I was so stupid, I didn't realize she was sick. I thought she was messing with me. I was so cruel to her for no reason. And she got worse and worse. <laughs> What's that picture? Looking at this photo reminds me. One time, when I was a kid, I said something really bad to Mom and Dad, and they scolded me for it. And it's not like it was an apology or anything, but Dad and I gave her a Mother's Day gift. My mom was so happy that she cried. That's what this photo is from. <laughs> Why did it turn out like this? I'm such a bad son. Hey, Iba. What is it? I don't like Ota one bit. But I can't imagine that this guy is the criminal. Why is that? Hearing his story made me think that he's not such a bad guy. Your presumption is illogical. Human beings are illogical. We're not like you AI, we can't be logical all the time. But we make up for it in one very important way. What is that? Intuition. Do you find that useful? At times. Hmm. Iba, let's go back to the cold storage warehouse. We might be missing something. <sighs> Understood. Date, weren't you going to check the warehouse? I was, but a thought occurred to me. Date, look! A tongue fish on the ocean floor! What's a tongue fish? A flat fish, like the sole of a shoe. You can see all the way down there? Of course I can. My vision and my looks are my best qualities. Iba, who drove the van here? There are two possibilities. Either Iris, or the criminal who kidnapped Iris. And Mayumi? Considering the time that she purchased the chocolate, that would be almost impossible. The van was hijacked from the Famisto parking lot at 10.32 p.m. At that time, Mayumi was in the 812 convenience store more than 100 yards away. I'm Drum, I'm on. You say strange things sometimes. Iba, what's in this box? Your favorite kind of reading material, and a lot of it. Uh, academic research papers on criminology? No, the kind that features gratuitous nudity.
Just like my you-know-what. What is your you-know-what? It could only be one thing. Oh, your ego? No, not my ego. Iba, are you sure that Ota took this car? As I've already explained, the security cameras at the Famisto parking lot saw the entire incident clearly. So it was definitely Ota who drove it here. Why are you stating the obvious? We found the chocolate Mayumi bought on the floor of the cold storage warehouse. But that doesn't prove she was actually at the scene. If she was, how did she get here? She wasn't in the van or the station wagon. Of course. A different car. I will search for all vehicles that were in this area from Sunday night to Monday morning. Found one hit. A taxi. Where is that taxi now? It is parked in Lemniscate's parking lot. At Lemniscate? Why? Unknown. But we should speak with the driver immediately. Hey, got a minute? Hmm, are you talking to moi? Moi? Date, now is not the time to be distracted by this old man's diction. Mind if I ask you what you're doing here? Moi? I am but a humble taxi cab driver. There we go. I'm with the police. I have some questions for you. Ah, this is Magnus Spiel. How do you know? Featured, anyone can run a pyramid scheme. I believe I'll purchase that on my way home. Sofa King. Don't. A high stool. It's like a tall seat. Why are you stating the obvious? Oh, have you taken note of the painting? It is titled, Lions Fishing, Carpe Diem. didn't you? But it's kind of complicated. I told you, I am reptilian. But you were just joking, right? No, I'm serious. I only eat vegetables. I am fairly sure she means vegetarian. I can't hear you. 
Well, what can I say, you know? The biz is harsh, schedules are tight. If we shut down for even a day, we'd throw everyone else's schedules off. So they want to avoid that, of course. What? You're too far away. I can't hear you. Oh, I can't believe Tessa became a victim too. It's like, seriously, can you not? What if I'm next? It freaks me out. Date, could you introduce me to some big, strong man who can protect me? Nah, I'm sure you'll be fine on your own. No, I'll totally die. I was born in Kawago, Saitama. And why do you talk like that? I don't know what you mean. I've spoken this way all my life. My parents speak with the same vernacular. I have just finished conveying my client from Tameke Sano's studio. I was informed that the visit here would be brief, and thus I have decided to wait in this lobby. Did you drive this passenger on Sunday night? Ooh, I did indeed. I remember her well. The old hag. Old hag? I took her on a tour of the streets of Tokyo. Our ultimate destination was the warehouse district in Ariake. Why didn't you report this to the police? Report it? You don't know about the incident at the cold storage warehouse? It was all over the news. No, I'm afraid not. Newspapers and television news programs have never been much of an interest to moi. Hmm, I recall it was around 10 in the evening. Near the Kabasaki district, an unassuming restaurant named Matsushita Diner. That's where I picked up the old hag. And as soon as she stepped foot in my conveyance, she was already barking orders at me. Follow that man, hurry! I must admit, I found it rather exciting, just like an old chase film. I, of course, insisted that I be paid up front. We pursued the van for roughly half an hour. Suddenly, the van came to a halt at a convenience store. The Famisto along Koshu, right? Precisely right. I am surprised you know that. In any case, I knew that the jig would be up if we were seen following the van. So I decided to drive past it. I parked at the 8 store, but 100 yards from there, while waiting for the object of our pursuit to make its next move. The old hag suddenly spoke up. I have to buy something, she declared, then made her way into the 8. This must be when Mayumi bought the Odoroki Man chocolate. A few minutes later, the old hag finished making her purchases and walked out. And then, at that very moment, I witnessed the van jet off at great speed down Koshu. I hurried the old hag inside my vehicle, then resumed the chase. We followed them for roughly half an hour more. I see. If the driver's story is correct, Mayumi did not know that Oto was left behind at the Famisto. Mayumi thought Oto was in the van the whole time. We then arrived at a splendid manor. The van entered the premises through the front gate and disappeared from view. We, of course, could not follow, so we waited outside. I estimate another 10 minutes passed. The front gate opened once again, and the van drove out, and we pursued. But 30 minutes later, our pursuit was foiled again. What happened? The van drove into the restricted Kabasaki district. The old hag, of course, demanded that I follow. But I was not about to risk my license and livelihood. 
Instead, I parked on the road and waited for the van to drive back the way it came. Ah, but of course, we knew it might not take the same road back. In fact, we were not even sure the van would be coming back at all. But the old hag was not keen on giving up, so we began our stakeout. About 45 minutes later, the date had changed at this point. It was 12.25 a.m. on Monday. How do you remember the time so well? Well, you see, I always keep my radio dial on the same station. I remember precisely which programs were playing during this endeavor. Thus, I can approximate the time. I see. Please continue. At 12.25 a.m., the old hag's tenacious gamble paid dividends. The van returned down the same street. And thus, we again made pursuit. I kept considerable distance. We had come so far, I did not want to get caught now. But my caution backfired. I lost sight of the van in the R.E.R.K. warehouses. Without so much as a thank you, the old hag popped open the door and took off toward the warehouses. I waited for some time, but the old hag did not return. The goose was cooked at this point, so I made the decision to return home. I am glad I had the foresight to ask for payment in advance. I follow your story. I have one more question. Where is this manor the van stopped at? Oh, every taxi driver in the city knows that residence. It is the personal home of Congressman So Sejima. Sejima? Why did the van go to So's house? We need to speak with him immediately. Agreed. Let's move. There's no one here. Indeed. I don't see So or his bodyguards. I do not detect them either. Let's go inside. Hey, Aiba. Do you smell something funny? You are aware that I do not possess the sense of smell, correct? Oh, right. There's something strange about this vase. Ugh. What is it? This is definitely where the smell is coming from. Is there something inside? Maybe, but the opening is covered by a metal plate. The lid is fixed with a bolt. It will not open easily. Yeah. Then, as is standard procedure... Destroy the vase! Got it.
That is the head of Sosajima. Left eye is hollowed out. This is most likely a crime committed by the new Cyclops killer. Do you have an estimated time of death? Today, sometime between 11 a.m. and noon. That's about when I was talking to Ota at Matsushita Diner. At that time, Mayumi was in police custody and Iris was in the ICU of Central Hospital. They have not moved. That means Ota, Mayumi, and Iris couldn't possibly have committed the crime. Assuming that this is the work of a single killer, those three can be eliminated from the list of suspects. Ota, Mayumi, and Iris are not the new Cyclops killer. Right. By the way, why is there no one in the mansion? No bodyguards, no housekeepers. I do not know. Does So have family? So Sejima's wife died in labor 30 years ago, giving birth to their son. Their son is currently living abroad. So lived here alone? Do you find that suspicious? No, just... Date, a call from Pewter. Connect me. Date, the sync machine is up and running. You can sync with Mayumi now. Oh. Thanks, Pewter. But there are more pressing matters now. Did something happen? Yeah, I found So Sejima's body, with the left eye hollowed out. What? I'm at the Sejima household. Send the investigation team over. Why so? I can answer your questions when I get back to Abyss. Got it. Date, what is your plan? Wait until crime scene investigation arrives? No. There's something I need to do. If that taxi driver was telling the truth, Mayumi was at the warehouse yesterday. And we know the chocolate we found at this scene was hers. Maybe she saw something. Maybe she knows something we don't. Some kind of clue or information about the culprit. Then... Yeah. We're gonna sync with Mayumi. swarming outside the building. Really? Doesn't matter. The sink is what's important. If we sink into Mayumi's brain, that might help us find the real culprit. I understand. Are you ready? Yeah. Then, let's begin. Oh, silly me! This is my house! Huh? 
I... What happened to me? This is Matsushita Diner, though it looks... odd. Likely an effect of the dementia. Then we need to help remind her. Do you think such a thing can be done? This diner means everything to Mayumi. If we do what we did last time and reproduce the actions from Mayumi's memories, we could help her remember everything. Is this what you call your intuition? Told you it was useful. Well, if we must... Somnium scan! Activate! A swinging door that leads to the kitchen. The sliding door at the entrance. Who could that be? A calendar. The calendar reads two months ago. A wall clock. The hands have stopped. A swinging door that leads to the kitchen. Ota, come over here! Ota? Ota? A girly magazine came in the mail. Is this for Ota or for Dad? Well, this is awkward, but there's no reaction. I tried my best. Let's investigate something else. The sliding door at the entrance. Welcome back. Welcome back, Ota. You're late today. I'm home. Are you not hungry? Today's dinner is omelet rice. Your favorite. Dad isn't back yet, but you can start eating. Again? I'm okay. I ate already. But... I'm fine. Uh, Ota, wait! Part of the diner has manifested. Maybe this is one of the memories she forgot. It must be important to her, though. It looks like a sad memory. It doesn't matter if it's sad. It's still important. Agent Dante, clock. you've got five minutes. The hands have stopped. Oh? It's the phone. Maybe try picking it up? Roger. What's that? I'm the one millionth caller? I've won a fantastic prize! I just have to give you my bank account information? Stop, just hang up already. An 
an old menu. Let's come up with a new menu. Sauteed Matsutake and Shiitake Mushrooms. The Matsushita set meal. 3,980 yen. What do you think? I'm leaning toward no. Agent An Dante, old beer poster. You've got four minutes. The phone is ringing. My husband? Yes, Matsushita Diner. Yes. Well, yes. Yes. What? My, my husband! Why? How could this happen? The diner has changed again. However... These memories aren't all happy, but they are all significant. If this continues, will it not have a negative effect on Mayumi? Maybe. But we have to see this through. We have to. Understood. A delicious cake. I wonder who it's for. You. I don't think the cake is for Mayumi. But what could be more memorable than a cake for yourself? Maybe a cake for someone that you love? Someone Mayumi loves. A delicious cake. You have three minutes, Date. Congratulations, Ota! I'm home! Ota! Congratulations on getting into the university, son! Congratulations! Hooray! Congrats! Ota was quite the spoiled child, wasn't he? He definitely had a lot of growing up to do. But that's what makes him so important to Mayumi. I see. You have less than two minutes. Hurry! It's an envelope. Some kind of mail? This is a bank statement. The Matsushita family's loan. Let's do our best. <sighs> we have to keep supporting Ota. Okay. We'll work harder for Ota's dream.
produced another painful memory. No, not quite. Are you certain? Mayumi was under a heavy burden of debt and stress running the diner. That's true, but sometimes hardship is worth it. Is that so? It's a sticker from a chocolate candy. Welcome home! Did you get it for me? It? This is... Oto when he was small? Do you mean chocolate? Yeah, Odoroki man, remember? Oh, that! Yes, of course I bought it. Look, the Momonoki Man chocolate that you like. Here you go. That's not it. Oh, honey, I thought you liked the Momonoki Man chocolate. No, I told you. It's Odoroki Man. Oh, sorry. Your mom can be such a dummy sometimes. You're not just a dummy, you're a super dummy idiot! Oh, well, you're right, sweetie. I'm sorry. I'm a big dummy. I'll buy you a real Momonoki Man soon. Stupid! It's not Momonoki Man, it's Odoroki Man! I hate this! I hate you, Mom! What? Wait, Ota! Where did you go? Please, come out from hiding, Ota. Ota, I'm sorry. Mommy won't make any mistakes anymore, Ota. Ota, come back, Ota! on my own. Don't leave me! So that's what happened. Date, look at what you've done. If Mayumi wakes up after all this trauma... I know it's risky, but we're here for a reason. What are you planning? We have to keep going. Just a little more to awaken her past. But... If she loves her family this much, there has to be something. There has to be a precious memory hidden deep within. Is that... your intuition? It is. A wall clock. Ota, sweetie! Mom! I... Uh, I... Uh, huh. 
We know we can be a hassle sometimes, so... Huh, Ulta. Yeah. Thank you, Mom. <laughs> you know, I... I love you. Forever and ever. Me too, Ota. <laughs> I love you both so much! I'll love you both no matter what! Oh, forever and ever! Oh, oh I'll never forget this! Oh. Yeah! We are a family! We can do anything! Yes! Yeah! Looks like it's okay to go back now. Yes, I agree. By the way, Date. Hmm? I admit, it is useful every now and then. What is? Your intuition. Ota, I'm so sorry for worrying you. What do you mean? Your mother retracted her confession. Oh, I'm so glad. Yes, yes. But Mom, why did you think I did it? About that.
Ota, I'm so What do you mean? Your mother rich <sighs> I'm so glad. Yes. But mom about that. Polar bear plucking out Iris's left eye? I was so terribly frightened. I panicked and ran. I'm sure that's when I dropped the chocolate. And I ran away from the warehouse as fast as I could. I just kept running and running. But while I was running, I had a thought. Maybe that polar bear was Ota. Because at the time, I thought Ota was the one driving the van. If Ota brought Iris to the warehouse, then Ota must have been the one in the suit. That's what I was thinking anyway. So that's why. I'm so sorry that Mom doubted you, Ota. No, no, I understand. It's my fault for making you worry. Ota. But there's one thing I don't get. Why did you buy that chocolate when you were following me? Oh, because... You liked Odoroki Man chocolate when you were young, right, Ota? Yeah. I was like the number one or two collector of the stickers in my elementary school class. I stuck some of my duplicates all around the diner, too. You and Mayumi have strong memories of that chocolate, right? Yeah, but I guess they're not all sweet memories. They're like chocolate, you know? Bittersweet. Makes my heart hurt a little. That's not it! Oh, honey! I thought you liked the Momonoki Man chocolate. No! I told you! It's Odoroki Man! Oh... Sorry, your mom can be such a dummy sometimes. You're not just a dummy, you're a super dummy idiot! Oh, well, you're right, sweetie. I'm sorry. I'm a big dummy. I'll buy you a real Momonoki man soon. Stupid! It's not Momonoki man, it's Odoroki man! After I yelled at her, Mom immediately went to buy me another chocolate. My dad came back from buying some ingredients at the same time and they ran into each other. My dad really let me have it. How dare you speak to your mother like that? Because Mom is stupid. You're stupid to call your mother stupid. Your mother bought you that to make you happy. You need to think about how she feels. I didn't raise you like that. But, but... When she comes back, you apologize. Do you understand? My dad told me to apologize as soon as mom came back. But the guilt... I hurt my mother, you know? That guilt in my heart... It didn't go away, even after I apologized to her. After that, things got awkward with Mom. But a few days later, my dad came up with an idea. Hey, Ota, how about this? You know Mother's Day is coming up. Why don't we get a gift for your mom, hmm? A gift? That was the first time I had ever heard my dad say something like that. You know how Mom always takes care of us. We should think of a way to pay her back. I'm sure my dad was trying to clear the air between all of us. 
So, on Mother's Day, I used my New Year's money I saved up to buy my mom that flower knife. And my dad saved up a little money to buy the floral apron. And when mom got her gifts, she started bawling, like full-on crying. Oh, you boys. I don't deserve all this. Thank you, thank you. You do deserve it, Mom. I'm proud that you're my mom. Right, Dad? Oh, um, uh... Yes, Mom is the best mom in the world. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Say cheese! Sorry, I lost track of time. What were we talking about again? The Odoroki Man chocolate. Why she bought the chocolate in the middle of tailing you. Tailing? Mom. It could be due to her memory disorder. It is possible that her thought process was once again short-circuited. Ota, I'm just going out on a limb here. Huh? Earlier, I looked inside Mayumi's head. Inside her head? She was thinking of nothing but you. Her head was full of memories of you. Mayumi just wanted you to come back, Ota. So she bought that chocolate. The chocolate you loved as a kid. She thought she could get you back home with it. That's why I believe, in Mayumi's head, you're still young, Ota. I don't know. I could be wrong. No, you're right, Date. That's why my mom bought the chocolate. She wanted her little kid back. Date. I'm Ota's friend. Ota's friend? Is that right? I hope you two get along. Oh, Mom. I was always so selfish. I made my mom go through such hard times. So from now on, I'm going to support her the way she supported me. I'll do anything. I'll deliver newspapers or be a janitor or anything. I'll work as hard as I can to make sure my mom can rest easy. What about your dream of being an author? Well, of course I'm not going to give up on that. But I'll set my sights a little smaller. I'll start by writing a short story. Let me read it when you're done. Of course. Oh, I forgot to tell you something important. Something important? I heard the nurses talking before I came in here. Iris is awake. R really Yeah, she's due to be transferred from the ICU to the general ward. Thank God. You saved her life, you know. Maybe, just maybe. Huh? Maybe what? <laughs> Nothing. See you, kid. Is Iris your girlfriend? Yeah, I'll introduce you next time. She's a great girl. Oh my, I'm looking forward to it. 
Is she going to be your financier? Oh, maybe I should clean up a bit first. Financer? Oh, fiance. Oh, yes! Yes, that's it! <laughs> Jeez, Mom. <laughs> 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 Date, there are still many loose ends in this investigation. Yeah, you're right. Ah, <sighs> looks like another all nighter. Has there been any progress in this Jima investigation? None. Zero clue. Not exactly. We have two clues. Two? Two points of information. But they may not connect directly to the murders. What are the two clues? Point one. This may be easier to see than explain. I sent a video to the boss's PC. Could you check there, please? What's this? It's from Sunday night. Yes, after Date was beaten by Ota at Matsushita Diner. Tessa, wait! Uh, I'll get the car. You witch! There, stop it. I noticed this earlier as well. Do you see the walk on the floor beside Iris and Mayumi? Yeah, what about it? Look closely. The bottom part is curved. Do you notice anything in the reflection? Iris and Mayumi? Yes. I have prepared an enlarged and processed version of the image. Boss, the next video. wrong did something happen no everything's fine okay let's go Ota. hey what's this iris has the kitchen knife the video continues, but this should be enough. Iris took the knife and left the diner with Ota. But if Ota's testimony is true, the polar bear had the kitchen knife. Maybe it was taken off of Iris when she was kidnapped. At the Femisto parking lot? Whatever, we can think about it later. You said you had two clues. Yeah, what's the other one? I have learned new information. More thorough autopsy results of Renju's body have revealed something. An object in his intestines. An object? A clump of organic matter. Because it was partially digested, it took significant time to analyze. Well, what was it? Shoko Nadami's eyeball.
A CRT TV. Body me. A double to it doesn't open. A torso with a Five minutes left, Dante. An operating table. An old... Iris has... Let's go. Only a shelf. That shelf sticking out. A metal ball must have fallen off the shelf. Why would anyone put that there? An iron ball. It looks quite heavy. Where? Throw it that way. Understood. It is unexpectedly light. All right. Uh...
feel like that ball hit me in the head. Now, a TV and an old book have appeared. I hope this is the last time. Three minutes, Date. An old... This was the third victim of the original Cyclops killer. Why does... There is a possibility that she saw it online or on TV. She even reproduced the circumstances of the killing. Date, we have no direct evidence. For now, we must continue investigating. Right. It is a thick book. It has not been well preserved. Can you tell what kind of book it is? It is probably a book. Insects! Don't get excited. <sighs> Does this book bel- I didn't know she liked insects! And to read the book so often that it would- Well, we can't prove it's Iris- True. We cannot conclude any- A drug bottle that holds- There is it's probably dangerous. I agree. We should not even insomnium. Something just a lock. Ah! Iba. It's all right. More importantly.
What happened in that Somnium? We saw it too. The four murdered women are without a doubt the victims of the original Cyclops serial killings. That means... The murders that occurred six years ago are these memory fragments that coalesced in this Somnium. No. That means the person who killed them was... Somnium earlier. I saw someone else who might be the criminal. Who was he? I wouldn't know. The Sinker does not always experience the Somnium they expect. Dreams are pieced together from memories, even repressed subconscious ones. When using the sync machine for an investigation, we don't always see the memories we expect to see. True, oftentimes a subject will subconsciously want to express their dark secrets and repressed memories. That is why we see them so often in Somnia. And why those Somnia are so useful for criminal investigations. But this is not a guarantee. We cannot control the content of our dreams, after all. It's like I told you before. Dreams are pieced together from memories. This can be expressed as an equation. Dream D equals memory A plus memory B plus memory C. This, of course, means that dream D is a fictional event. However, the same cannot necessarily be said about memory A, B, and C. Those happened in reality. In other words, Fiction is built from combinations of reality. So what I saw in Somnium earlier... Yes. I believe Iris actually witnessed those events. Pewter, you said that memories happen in reality, right? But what about false memories? How do we know if the memory really happened? Even false memories are built from the pieces of real ones. If you disassemble those pieces, you will find real events. What about things you see in movies or television? The events might be fictional, but the experience is not. Our imaginations are limited to what we have seen. We cannot invent something whole cloth. I don't believe there's any meaningful connection. Between the original and new Cyclops serial killings, I mean. Why is that? The culprit is not the same. I am absolutely certain the original Cyclops killer could not have committed these crimes. How can you be so sure? Because I can. Don't worry about it. Just trust me. Remember what the boss said this morning. The original Cyclops killer has yet to be brought to justice. After the investigation got going, it was taken over by the government and classified. That was the last we heard anything about it. Of course, they paid lip service to the idea that the investigation was ongoing. But in reality, it was dropped completely. Help me understand this. What I saw during the sink earlier, that was the scene of the original Cyclops serial killings, right? Yeah. So the person doing the killing was the original Cyclops killer? Right. Did you see him? He was... I saw... your face. 
The original Cyclops killer was... It can't be. That's impossible. Date, you cannot say that for certain. You have no memories past six years ago. So perhaps, Mr. Date, you are the killer. You're missing your left eye. So you steal them from others. I'm kidding. You can't be the Cyclops killer. Really? Of course not. Do you think I would hire a serial killer? You interrogated Iris before the sink. What you saw in the Somnium was just a manifestation of the fear you put in her. You can't dream of something you know nothing about. That means Iris must know about the killings. Six years ago, Iris was 12. Did she witness the crime at age 12? And not just one, but all four? Hmm... The Cyclops killer appeared six years ago. I lost my memory six years ago. There has to be some kind of connection. There isn't. It's a coincidence. Really? Really. Didn't I tell you? The entire case is a state secret. No matter how many times you ask, I won't tell you anything. Dante, it looks like Iris is about to wake up. Got it. Hey, Iris. About that dream earlier. Dream? What dream? There is no point in asking her, Date. The subject of a sink does not experience Somnium in the way that you do. They will not remember it. Then what about the Cyclops killer, from six years ago? Cyclops killer? I remember hearing it on the news. But I was just a little girl. I don't remember anything specific. You don't? No. What about the scene of the murder? I don't know. I've never been there. But... Dreams are pieced together from memories, even repressed subconscious ones. You can't dream of something you know nothing about. Date, could you take Iris home? Huh? We do not have enough evidence to hold her. Even in Somnium, we couldn't find anything. The law demands that we release her. You cannot decline, Date. Date? Could we make a stop first? Sure. Where? Marble. It's a bar in Golden Yokocho. You know about that place? Yeah. Mr. Okiura took me before. Why do you want to go there? There's something I want to talk about. We can't talk here? It might take a while. What do you think? There's no reason to refuse. Besides, there's a lot I want to ask her, too. All right, sure.
Professor! Oh, Ota! I didn't tell him to come. He just showed up on his own. I was Niling with Tessa earlier. She said she was going to Marble, so... I got here just before you did. Look, I was really worried about her. She was about to be charged with a serious crime. No, this is my new one. You're thinking of the one I dropped in that puddle. Oh, she left a little while ago. She said something about going to help an acquaintance. She told me to watch the place until she got back. How well do you know Mama? Not at all. It's my first time here. This actually works out nicely. I want to ask you something, Ota. It's about a Nile message you sent Iris. You said you wouldn't tell anyone about that thing. That you'd stay quiet no matter what. What were you talking about? Well, uh... I'll tell her about the two-witter thing. I swear I'll do it. Jeez, fine. Just don't tell anyone else, okay? But... Before I tell you, who's that? What? At the door. Someone's standing outside. Looks like you're awake now. It'll be three o'clock soon. In the morning. Of course. I tried. You wouldn't budge. I thought you were passed out drunk, so I left you like that. But I didn't have a glass in front of me, right? So you weren't drunk? Didn't have a single drop. Oh, I thought you were drinking straight out of the bottle. Just like the old days. Ota? The boy I asked to watch the bar? I'd say he's too old to be called a boy, but yeah. He was already gone when I came back. All I saw was you getting your beauty sleep on the floor. Damn it, Ota. What are you thinking? 
It appears that he took off with Iris. What were you doing during all this? My power was shut down due to the stun gun. I have rebooted in safe mode and am now operational. Date, the boss is calling. Oh, how am I going to report this one? Date, listen. Stay calm, but this is an emergency. Just now, the killer... Well, just watch the video. I sent the address to Iba. Iris! No, that's... The criminal is streaming this live. Iba, the source. Identified. The Okiura Fishery Cold Storage Warehouse, Koto District. Okiura? Date, focus. We need to get to the site, now. What's our ETA? Our destination is far from here. 20 minutes at the fastest. Please, please let me make it in time. <sighs> that sick bastard! No. Stop. No.
There you are. Finally. I was looking all over for you. It's rare to see you down like this, but it's understandable. You blame yourself for this, don't you? Beating yourself up about taking Iris to marble, and about letting Ota get the upper hand on you. Am I right? Shall I tell you what Investigation HQ thinks? Ota Matsushita is a criminal stalker who committed murder-suicide. Ota had a selfish love for Iris. He was under the delusion that Iris loved him too. But Iris refused Ota. So Ota decided that he and Iris should be together in the afterlife, killed her, then killed himself. That's ridiculous. Ota would never kill Iris. And how do you explain the other two murders? Iris's left eye was hollowed out. Just like Renju and Shoko. Those three murders were definitely executed by the same person. The new Cyclops killer. There's no way that's Ota. Too many pieces don't fit. Too many contradictions, like killing Iris. Such as? Stay away from Tessa! Ota showed himself on the stream. If he was going to kill Iris and then himself, why would he do that? The only reason you would show yourself like that is to prove that you weren't the culprit. Ota and the polar bear on the screen at the same time would prove that they're not the same person. That behavior would be totally unnecessary if he was going to commit suicide anyway. Well, maybe he wasn't planning on dying at first. After he killed Iris, he realized that he couldn't live with himself. So he lies down on the workbench and turns on the ice-cutting machine himself? I don't buy it. The culprit was wearing a polar bear costume, probably to hide their identity. But if murder-suicide was the plan, the costume served no purpose. Maybe he was thinking like this. The reason Iris and I can't be together is because her agency prohibits it making the president, Renju, the ultimate bad guy in his mind. Mizuki is Ota's close friend. Do you really think Ota would kill his friend's father? Shoko was married to Renju. Maybe he was trying to get at Renju by killing her. That's a stretch. They've been divorced for years. Ota knows all about it. He wouldn't use Shoko to get to Renju. There are some additional discrepancies. I analyzed the investigation report. Judging by his wound, Ota was stabbed in the side by a kitchen knife or something similar. Are you sure? I am. Oh, I know that. Well? Ota could have stabbed himself. Maybe he thought it would be a fatal wound, but when it didn't work, he went for the ice-cutting machine. Then, shouldn't we have recovered the kitchen knife from the scene? Maybe he threw it in the ocean. Boss, come on. Ota goes out to the water, stabs himself in the gut, throws the knife over the side, then walks back to the warehouse? Well, I wasn't being serious. I didn't think Ota was the culprit from the beginning. I was just playing devil's advocate for HQ. Really? Yes, really. Anyway, Ota didn't kill anyone, and he didn't kill himself. Here's what I think happened. Stay away from Tessa! Ota knew Iris was kidnapped, so he rushed onto the scene. That's when he saw the culprit wearing the polar bear costume. 
He tried to fight him off, but ended up being stabbed in the side. He was weakened and losing blood at the culprit's mercy. The culprit forced him into the costume, then under the ice cutting machine. And then... Then, who is the culprit? I wish I knew. We're up to four victims. But Ota was a special circumstance. He wasn't specifically targeted by the culprit. Right. And he was the only one to not have his eye pulled out. So let's focus on the three other victims. Shoko, Renju, and Iris. What connects these three? Connections. If you find a connection between the victims, you find a connection to the culprit. That's the theory of investigation, right? You think the new Cyclops killer is related to them somehow? Maybe, maybe not. But it's a good starting point. Mizuki has the strongest connections with all three victims. Shoko and Renji were her parents, and she was close friends with Iris. She was good friends with Ota, too. But that's why I could never believe Mizuki would kill all four of them. Thinking of her as a suspect is ridiculous. Renju and Shoko were connected to the Komakuras. But there's no connection to Iris. Renju, Shoko, and So. There is a connection between Renju and Shoko through the Kumakuras. But again, I can't see any clear link to Iris. I know Renju and Shoko. And I'm connected to Iris. But I have an alibi. Aside from Shoko, there's no way I could have killed any of them. No, now that I think about it, Shoko too. I don't remember killing her. My memories from six years ago are missing, but I still have my memory of recent events. And if I start doubting myself now... Date, I can say without a doubt that there is zero possibility you are the new Cyclops killer. I have been working with you for years. I know better than anyone that you are innocent. Mayumi had motive for killing Iris and Renju. Mayumi hated Iris, and she didn't think well of Lemnus Gate either. And since Renju is the president... Anyway, the weak point is Renju's ex-wife, Shoko. I can't imagine why Mayumi would kill her. And above all else, she would never harm her only son, let alone kill him. Hitomi and Renju are definitely linked. They were high school classmates. And she did say that she met Shoko twice. But I can't imagine she would kill Iris in such a gruesome way. No matter what the circumstances were, it seems impossible to me. I thought it over, boss. Of the people I know, I can't peg any of them as the murderer. And no leads to pursue? No. Then there's only one thing you can do. Continue your investigation. Do whatever it takes to get the culprit. To get justice for the victims. You're right. Got it, boss.
This is your fault. I heard from the police. Because you didn't take care of Iris, my boy Ota got involved. Date, I looked into the investigation report. Mayumi confirmed Ota's body early this morning. I see. I'm sorry. I want to be alone right now. Did you not hear me? I said leave! <laughs> Date, let's go. She is in no state to talk. Yeah, you're right. Nazuki must know about Iris and Ota. Of course. The news was distributed heavily across the internet. Not just in Japan, but worldwide. Three days ago, Mizuki discovered her mother's body. Two days ago, her father's. This morning, two of her best friends. It is completely understandable that she is at her mental limit. Can I be left alone for a while? Are you okay? Yeah. Aiba, contact Abyss. See if they can get Mizuki a good counselor. Understood. Are you okay, honey? Huh? About last night. Well, at three in the morning, anyway. You know about it? It's on every channel. You have the face of a ghost. Do you want a glass? I don't need a drink. I need information. Do you have anything? Well, let's see. I do have... I suppose you could call it intuition. Tell me. The Kumakuras are involved in this case. Remember what I told you before? That there's a relationship between Ren and the Kumakuras? Shoko also has a relationship with them. 
You know about her dealings with the Kumakuras, right? So basically, two of the victims are linked to the Kumakuras. That must mean they're involved somehow, right? Not two. Three. Three? Iris? No, not that one. The boy. He came here last night. Ota? Yes, from Matsushita Diner. He's linked to the Kumakuras as well. Have you heard the rumor? The Kumakuras own a handful of real estate companies. They of course look legit, but they're Yakuza fronts. I'll call those real estate companies the K.E. to keep it simple for you. The K.E. followed in So's footsteps. They bought up land in Kabasaki. Now, back to So. Have you heard of the plans for the casino in Kabasaki? So was the one who came up with it. I was born and raised in Kabasaki. I remember the landscape of my childhood, and I loved it dearly. But look at Kabasaki now. When I see images of the destruction on television, my heart aches like it's being chopped to pieces. But I promise you, I will revive the Kabasaki district at any cost. Casino Town Kabasaki will give new life to the city. After that, So moved fast. He submitted the bills he needed to the National Assembly after drumming up support in the right places. The bills passed and it became an official government initiative. Decontamination efforts therefore increased at a rapid pace in the Kabasaki district. At the moment, the area is still considered off-limits. However, the air in Kabasaki is currently purified to such an extent that it has no negative effect on the human body. If the plan goes smoothly, land prices in Kabasaki are going to skyrocket. And all that land is owned by the KE and by So himself. The land he bought back for one billion will be worth ten times that soon. He's involved in some shady business. This is just another rumor, but the chemical plant exploding was no accident. It was done intentionally. By So and the Kumakuras, you mean? But there's no hard evidence of that. It's just gossip. Uh, what were we talking about again? Ota and the Kumakuras. Oh, right! You know how Matsushita Diner is close to the Kabasaki district? The chemical plant explosion made times hard. Foot traffic went down, sales declined. No wonder it closed down. Ota must hold a grudge. Someone caused that explosion. And if it was intentional, oh, he'd hate them even more. That's how I link Ota to the Kumakuras. Thank you, Mama. I don't know if what you told me will lead to anything, but... Oh, sorry. I didn't mean to waste your time. No, no, it was very helpful. I'm glad I can help, even if it's just a little. Well then, be seeing you. Come back anytime.
Yoda was one of my students. I taught him in elementary school. I heard it from the police. Oda tried to help Iris and ended up... I don't know what to say. I have no words. Iris was my everything. We always went everywhere together. Whether it was buying clothes, or going to the movies, or taking a walk, or going shopping at the supermarket. When she was young, she would just hold one of my fingers. Her hand was too small to hold mine. Then it was two, then three. And finally she could hold my hand. But eventually, she left my hands altogether. She started crossing her arms, being independent, even though she needed constant attention growing up. Her memories are a part of this room. And always will be. When she was a baby, she fell off that sofa and cried and cried. One day, she tore up her picture book all over the floor here. <laughs> Another time, she drew with crayons all over the window. <laughs> She painted my portrait on Mother's Day. Scratches on the floor, chipped plates, burn marks on the table, stains on the cushions. Everything you see, it all holds a memory of her. <laughs> but why? Tell me, my entire focus is on this case. Is there anything at all you can tell me? I don't know if this is important, but... No, please, tell me. I may have told you this already. I met Renju's wife Shoko twice before. The first time at the wedding, the second time a month ago. That second time was in the waiting room of the prison. Prison? There's an acquaintance of mine from when we were younger. I visit them a few times a year. And by coincidence, I saw Shoko. I don't think she noticed me, but I recognized her as Renju's wife right away. She was there for the same reason I was, to visit one of the inmates. Do you know who? No, I don't. We didn't talk. Which prison? Fuchu Prison, in Tokyo. Fuchu? Prison. I'm sorry to have bothered you. I'll be going now. I don't know what to do. Thinking about her. Dante, please, you, you have to catch them. Please, please. I will. Trust me. No, nothing so far. Yeah. 
Iris' estimated time of death and cause of death have been confirmed. The video was not a recording. It was a live stream, filmed in real time. Which means Iris' time of death is 3.20 a.m. Iris also had her left eye removed. Yeah. And like Renju and Shoko, Iris's left eyeball has not been recovered. This forklift is old. It does not appear to be functional. It has not been moved in some time. I checked this place point by point, but didn't find nothing. There are only a few items on the shelf. Is this warehouse not in use? A video camera and laptop. This is what the criminal used to stream. All of these items have been bought from pawn shops and thrift stores. It would be difficult to determine a suspect from them. I have logged into the Wi-Fi in this warehouse. Okiura Fishery Co. Ltd. is listed as the owner. However, I found the password written directly on the router. Anyone who saw it could have used it. I have done some research. As the name suggests, the company is owned by the Okiuras, the same Okiuras we know. Renju's father created the company. Another connection to Renju. No, actually. Currently, Okiura Fishery has nothing to do with Renju. The company has been managed by office representatives for the past 17 years after Renju's father died. Renju holds no shares and is not involved in the management. In short, Renju did not inherit the company from his father, and it was instead given to other persons. But it can't be a coincidence. It certainly is suspicious. Right here, Iris and Oto were... I am sure you are already aware of Ota's time of death. Just before I arrived, about 3.30 in the morning. And the cause of death. Right, about that. Ota had a stab wound from a kitchen knife in his side. Correct. What was the exact cause of death? Was it the knife wound, or...? I cannot determine that. I can conclude that the knife wound was at least close to being fatal. Even if Ota was still alive on the workbench, he was certainly on the verge of death. If he weren't already extremely weak, we would expect to see more signs of struggle. But 
why? Why did the culprit put the costume on Ota? Unknown. Date, we should get moving. Officers from the local jurisdiction are checking the warehouse thoroughly. We will not find anything of importance here. Yeah, you're right. You can ask CSI to inform you if they find anything. All right. Date, I have to talk to you about something. Huh? About the original Cyclops serial killings. Why this all of a sudden? Because I want you to solve this case, Mr. Date. I want you to find who did this and bring them to justice. So, if I can help you, even a little... Why didn't you say anything at Abyss? The boss was there. I couldn't speak openly in front of her. So, I decided to meet you here. All right. Let's hear it. Earlier, I told you that I was completely certain the original Cyclops killer couldn't have committed these crimes. I am absolutely certain the original Cyclops... Let me explain why. I'll start by telling you the identity of the Cyclops killer. Although, it's more accurate to say, killers. More than one? In the first series of killings, the culprit had an accomplice. One of them was born a murderous psychopath. The other is Rohan Kumakura, the previous chairman of the Kumakuras. They each had a role to play. The murderer committed the homicide, and Rohan removed the eyeball. Eighteen years ago, Rohan took a woman's eye. She was already dead. He put his finger into her eye socket and gouged it out. The reason why was simple. He was fascinated by women's eyes. Their beauty stimulated his greed and his desire to possess them. He needed to have them. To make them his own. Driven by this instinctive impulse, he took the woman's eye from then on, he acquired a grotesque obsession with the eyes of dead women. He was very particular about his need that the eye belonged to a deceased woman. But even being the head of a Yakuza gang, there weren't too many opportunities for him to indulge. His deepest, darkest desire went unfulfilled for years. However, he soon met his ideal partner. The aforementioned psychopath. The Cyclops killer would commit the murder, and Rohan would take the eye. Thus, a mutually beneficial relationship was established. This was the origin of the Cyclops serial killings. At about the same time, you were assigned to Abyss. That... I don't know. The details of the original Cyclops serial killings case have become nebulous over time. Even the official investigation material contains nothing of value. I am unable to draw any conclusions from them. You really have no idea? If I did, I would tell you. He was born with a brain dysfunction. Due to damage to the posterior pituitary gland, he was unable to properly secrete oxytocin. 
Oxytocin is a peptide hormone linked to feelings of love, affection, and trust. It is colloquially referred to as the love hormone. It causes a tranquilizing effect which improves mood and relieves stress. It is normally secreted when the body makes contact with an object of affection, such as an embrace or caress. I'm sure you know what this implies, but he was unable to feel love in the way that we do. However, he was able to experience a substitute. His brain was wired in such a way that allowed him to feel satisfaction through other means. Due to the unique idiosyncrasies of his brain, he was able to release large amounts of dopamine and endorphins by performing a certain action. What was it? Murder. Dopamine is a hormone linked to the reward system of the brain. The pleasant feeling attained through accomplishment is dopamine. Endorphins are a kind of brain narcotic. They dull pain and create a feeling of happiness. He got pleasure from killing people? It's slightly more complicated than that. Killing people was the only way he could get pleasure. He was 12 when he took his first life. That enlightened him to the pleasure of murder, which he would do again and again. The original Cyclops killer had an accomplice. There were two Cyclops killers. And one of them was the former chairman of the Kumakuras, Rohan Kumakura. Rohan committed suicide by jumping to his death one year ago. That means... Pewter, tell me this. One of the original killers is dead, I know that. But that means one remains. Who is he? After his fourth murder, he was arrested by the police. They actually picked him up on other charges. But, in any case, he is currently serving a life sentence in Fuchu Prison. Fuchu Prison? Yes. What's his name? In prison, he doesn't have a name. He is simply called Number 89. Number 89? I know who killed Shogun Adami. So, now you know why I said that. That the original Cyclops killer couldn't have committed these crimes. Because one is dead, and the other is behind bars. Neither of them had the opportunity. Where did she go? Well, she isn't always here, correct? True. What are you doing? I thought it would be easier to talk like this. What do we have to talk about? A summary of the investigation, perhaps? What summary? We don't have anything new. That's not true. Huh? I was curious, so I did some research. About number 89. Unknown. I cannot determine if they have any connection. Approximately one month ago, Hitomi Sagan witnessed Shoko in Fuchu Prison's waiting room. I am unable to say for certain that the person she was there to visit was number 89. After all, Fuchu Prison houses 2,000 inmates. But number 89 knew Shoko's name. 
I know who killed Shogun Adami. That must mean that he knew her somehow. It is possible. As you know, he is an assassin with multiple confirmed kills. He is currently serving a sentence at Fuchu Prison. He was imprisoned six years ago. That's what Pewter told us. After his fourth murder, he was arrested by the police. Pewter claims that there were two culprits behind the original serial killings. One was the former chairman of the Kumakuras, Rohan Kumakura. But Rohan committed suicide last year. That leaves one culprit still alive, number 89. But number 89 couldn't possibly have committed these crimes. He was in jail when each of the murders occurred. Correct. However, I do not believe it is accurate to claim that he had nothing to do with the incident. I know who killed Shogun Adami. If he was telling the truth, his involvement is possible. Unknown. You don't know? No such person is listed in the family registry. It is possible he is a foreigner, but his nationality is unknown. However, I believe it is safe to say that he was born and raised in Japan. Let's talk to number 89. All right. However, we need not go to him. We can bring him to us. If we plan on sinking with him, it would be more efficient. Can you arrange that? I can. Sorry to interrupt your busy day, but I need you to tell me something. I'd appreciate your cooperation. Burkina Faso. Burkina Faso is a republic in West Africa. Population 17 million. I don't have time for your jokes. Yeah, I guess I do. About a month ago, Shoko visited Fuchu Prison. Was she there to see you? That's right. What did you talk about? Nothing special. You're in no position to lie. I'm not lying. She didn't come to hear me talk. Then why did she come? To meet me. Meet you? She probably just wanted to see me. A long time ago. I don't remember exactly when. What's your relationship to her? A physical one. I'm kidding, she was just a business partner. That's right. I was one of the culprits behind the case six years ago. One of the two Cyclops killers. Number 89. Your real name. I don't remember. All right. Let's get right down to it. Two days ago, you called Investigation HQ and said, I know who killed Shoko Nadami. That's right. Who? 
Hey, don't be so hasty. We haven't agreed on a deal. You're gonna let me out of prison, right? It's done. You've got a deal. All right. But to explain it properly, I need to tell you a story. It might take some time. Is that all right with you? I've got nothing but time. Then let's get started. The story of a lonely assassin. Once upon a time, there was a detective full of righteous justice. Let's call him F. F found the evils of the world intolerable. F had no parents, no siblings, and grew up in an orphanage since he was born. He suffered every kind of abuse imaginable there. It led him to despise all the evils of the world. One day, F was chasing a thug down at the harbor. Someone wanted for the assault and murder of women. Okay, I get it. I'll just throw down my knife. Here. And you lower your gun. It's fine. I got nothing else on me. I'll go quietly. You know, I have a history with hospitals. I've been going to a special hospital for a while. Even if I get caught, it's all good. I'll come right back out again. What should I do next time? Just thinking about it gets me excited. The culprit was unarmed, but F never served a day in prison. The case went to trial for some time, but it was determined to be self-defense, and he was declared innocent. If the truth got out, it would be a huge scandal for the police. People at the upper level were terrified of what might happen, so they had evidence fabricated. F wasn't suspended or disciplined at all. After a while, he returned to his job like nothing happened. That was a turning point for him. He was ready to shed the morality that was weighing him down, holding him back. F still wanted justice, and he was willing to dispense it to the immoral one by one. He became an assassin, a lone gunman, no agent, no employer. He was his own man. F believed that he was judge, jury, and executioner, but it didn't last long. One day, F got rid of a criminal we'll call X. X was responsible for defrauding and killing an innocent old man for his life insurance policy. Turns out, X had connections. Someone wasn't happy that he died. Rohan Kumakura, chairman of the Kumakuras. X was a top executive of the Kumakuras at the time. Rohan ordered his men to find and kidnap F. I've done some research. I know you've cleaned up at least 18 pieces of scum from this earth. But somehow there hasn't been a single criminal investigation. They're all treated as suicides, accidents, or natural causes. Amazing work. I'm impressed. How about you work for us? Of course, you have the right to say no. But it'll be the last word out of your mouth. F was trapped. Even if he somehow survived, he would be looking over his shoulder for the rest of his life. He had no choice but to take Rohan's offer. Thus, F's self-employment came to an end. He became a hired gun of the Kumakuras. Rohan even gave him a code name, Falco. Named for the falcon, a bird of prey. Falco didn't quit his job as a police officer, though. 
He worked as a detective by day, assassin by night at the will of the organization. An ordinary killer would need motive to take a life, but not Falco. He did as he was told, one target after another. It didn't take long to destroy his heart completely. Time passed, and a few years back, Falco, who by this time was exhausted in body and spirit, made a fatal mistake. He missed his mark and ended up taking a bullet to the stomach. Somehow, he managed to escape. After reaching a nearby shrine, his legs finally gave out under him. He had no strength left. He put his back up against the shrine and let out a moaning breath that he thought might be his last. But at that moment, in his darkening vision, he saw a woman approach him. He watched her take out her phone and dial for help. At the same time, he heard footsteps. Footsteps of at least two people closing in. He knew immediately that they were after him. He sprung into action, grabbing the woman and pulling her close, kissing her to keep her from talking. That was the first encounter between Falco and the woman. She was a teacher at some school. It was like she was from a totally different world than him. Listening to her talk, he would forget everything about his line of work. She was his only contact with the ordinary, mundane world. They met in secret a few more times, and Falco felt his heart grow warmer. Her smile and kindness were like a cold glass of water for Falco's parched heart. Falco started to become himself again, his former self. He swore on his life that from then on, he would live for her. So, you want to go clean? Fine. Do as you please. You've done a lot for us. But, there is one last thing. One final job I want you to do for me. It's nothing major. This woman and her daughter. I need you to dispose of them. Should be simple, no? Rohan handed Falco a picture of a woman and a girl. It was the teacher Falco met at the shrine. And her daughter. She had just turned 12. Why the two of them? Rohan, as usual, never gave a reason. And Falco had no intention of carrying out the kill. But if he didn't, he knew that someone else would. He thought long and hard. How is he going to keep them safe and get out of the life of crime? He couldn't find an answer, no matter how hard he thought. He was backed into a corner. So, he decided to call on an old friend for help. And then... Why did you stop? What's the connection between that and Shoko? You mentioned a detective. Was that the whole story? Hey, answer me. This is a transaction, remember? 
Until I get a guarantee that you'll uphold your end of the bargain, I'm not telling you anything else. I'll give you half up front, half later. <laughs> if you want to hear the rest of my story, you better start the release procedures. Once they've cleared, I'll tell you everything. Date, it is unlikely that number 89 will uphold his promise, even upon release. Pewter. Yes? Start the preparations. For what? What do you think? Injected number 89 with the usual dosage. He will not be waking up anytime soon. Are you ready, Agent Date? Yeah. The time limit is six minutes. I know. Then let's begin. Up. Nope. 